Hey you guys and welcome back to the Disney Girl. So with Mary Poppins and Cherry Tree Lane coming to Epcot soon, I feel like everybody is trying to figure out what kind of attraction is going to be in this area. Like, is it going to be a dark ride? Is it going to be a e-ticket attraction? I've even seen once that it was going to be like a spinning top ride like Dumbo. So everyone's trying to figure this out. And what I started to realize was Disney's already kind of thought about a Mary Poppins attraction. So I thought, why not dig into the blueprints of these attractions and figure out which kinds of rides have the possibility of coming to Epcot from different Disney and Imagineer designs. And while we're at it, we're going to take a look and see why this hasn't happened earlier, considering it was a thought on Disney's mind. So the film of Mary Poppins and all of its history is so in-depth when it comes to Disney. And after the film's major success and after Walt had passed away, Roy Disney ended up having $100 million that he was ready to invest into Walt Disney World and specifically Magic Kingdom. And in here, he was going to kind of try to change it up and make it not be so similar to its bigger brother, bigger sister over in California. And they were going to try and put in some new attractions. And one of these new attractions was going to be called Mary Poppins Flight. So this is going to be the first rendition of a Mary Poppins attraction that is known to all of us. And this was basically going to be taking the kind of idea of Peter Pan's flight that we have over in Disneyland and now that we have in Disney World. But back then over in Disneyland, it was going to take that kind of flying contraption feeling that you get when you're on that ride. And we were basically going to be put in upside down umbrellas and fly all over Cherry Tree Lane and all of the adventures that Mary Poppins had. And this seemed like a great idea. Like I said, the popularity of Mary Poppins was tested to be something that Disney found that their guests would really love to experience while at the parks. And it was also going to have its own specific and catered soundtrack. So there was going to be things from the film that we know and love, but they're also going to kind of twist it to make it its own for this ride. So it was going to be something like we've never seen before. And then with further developments, it was thought that they weren't going to do this umbrella situation anymore, but you are going to be on the back of a horse, just like you're on a carousel, and you're going to be able to leap through all of the adventures that Mary Poppins had. So we have two kind of contrasting ideas. And I mean, it does sound like a really cool attraction, but then this one happened, and I think that it is far superior to what we know about Mary Poppins' flight. And that is Mary Poppins' Jolly Holiday, which was an attraction created by Tony Baxter before he was even working for the Walt Disney Company. This was actually an attraction, Imagineered design, that he created to bring forth to Disney to try to get hired by Disney. It's what he kind of brought to them as an interview proposal. So Baxter loved the idea of turning Mary Poppins into a ride. It was his favorite kind of live action and animated film that he'd ever seen. I mean, not that that was something that was ever created by then, but it was a film that he really loved. And he thought if there was a way he was going to get hired by Disney, it would be by creating a ride based on this movie. So he quickly got to work and the diagrams and sketches of this attraction look amazing. You're basically going to be stepping into London and Cherry Tree Lane and the carousel and everything that you've seen in the movie all in one. And it kind of creates this entire city and somehow you're going to go through that entire city on this attraction. And something really interesting about this attraction was that Tony Baxter loved the Carousel of Progress and he was watching what Walt did with Carousel of Progress and loved this idea of moving something in a rotating sort of cycle to tell a story. So he kind of pulled from that idea with the ride vehicles and ended up creating this circular fashion to tell the story, but it was going to be a lot different. So in this one, you were going to start off in a carousel and it was going to look like the exterior of a carousel and you'd start off on your horse, but that horse was going to start to move into a circle and suddenly you wouldn't be outside anymore on that carousel. You were going to move into the buildings of old London and in each building you were going to experience different things from the movies. You'd get to meet the penguins, you would go right into the film and you would experience everything that Mary and the kids experienced. So yeah, the ride was basically going to start off normal and then you're going to jump right off the carousel onto this overhead track. You were going to be able to see all of the horse races. There was going to be some fun things happening with chalk. So you were basically looking at something and then right away you were going to have this whole cartoon life appear right before your eyes. You'd be able to hear Let's Go Fly a Kite and you'd be able to hang out with the chimney sweeps. I mean, this ride was literally going to take you in the air. And if we're talking about 
putting this kind of idea into today's sort of Imagineering society in Disney, there is so much opportunity since they've advanced so much in technology. I mean, imagine you could start off on a regular track, go to a trackless track. I mean, you could kind of tie in the idea of what they do on Tower of Terror, which is that they basically totally switch tracks and move you from one section to another and then hook you onto another track, which gives you the ability to go up and down, which how perfect would that be? Because let's go fly a kite would not be complete unless you were in the air. And if you were on the ground and you weren't expecting to go in the air, I think that it would be a total amazing Imagineering feat, especially filmed with all of the animatronics that they could add, holograms, different screens kind of being thrown in there. I don't know, I just think that Imagineers could have a field day with Baxter's original idea, but let's take a little bit more of a look on it. So Baxter brought this idea right on over to Disney and then Disney producer Bill Anderson took a look and Baxter totally thought that he got the job at this point. And what Bill Anderson did was tell him to keep on working on this, keep on going to school so he can get even better at his craft and then come back to Disney, which he did and then he became an Imagineer for the next 47 years. But then once he became an Imagineer, for some reason this project still got shelved and I mean it's such a good idea. Even Baxter says that even today it would be a fantastic ride idea. So why wasn't it made if they had all of the plans and all of the resources to do it? So if anyone knows anything about the history of Mary Poppins, you know that the film had a very difficult time being made and this was because of the author of the original Mary Poppins books, which was Mrs. Tavers. So she did not want Disney to ever come close to Mary Poppins. She hated the idea of it becoming something that she didn't write and kind of becoming something a little bit more fun than what she intended Mary Poppins as a character to be. And we both know that Walt Disney took about 20 years until he was able to get the rights to her story in order to create Mary Poppins. And if you've ever seen Saving Mr. Banks, you know that at the end it seems like she is so happy with the results of the film. She's kind of crying there. I mean, even before that happens, she was dancing to Let's Go Fly a Kite up in the rehearsal room, and it seems like she was really starting to take a liking to Disney's interpretation of Mary Poppins. But unfortunately, that was a disney version of what happened. And what actually happened was that she hated the movie. From the first time she saw it, she wasn't able to rewatch it for the next 20 years. And plus, I mean, I love the Sherman Brothers, but even they couldn't get her dancing to Let's Go Fly a Kite. That was definitely something added to the movie to make it seem a little bit more happy and enjoyable to watch, but it wasn't quite based in reality. But what did happen was that she did indeed sign the rights over from Mary Poppins over to the Walt Disney Corporation. And when she signed these rights over, she signed them over for all of her stories. So basically Disney was able to make a sequel and they would be able to kind of do whatever they wanted with it. But she also noted that there was gonna to have to be a creative understanding and agreement upon these things. And it just so happens that in the 1980s, Walt Disney wanted to make a sequel to the Mary Poppins movies but there was a lot of creative differences between the Walt Disney Company and Tavers. So just with that whole thing happening, it looked like a ride based on this attraction was never going to happen, considering the fight that they were putting up to try to even get the sequel made, which didn't end up happening till many, many, many years later. And if you're wondering what this 1980s film was going to be based on was that it was going to be Michael who's all grown up and now his kids are there but he is in a pickle and Mary Poppins comes back to his adult self and helps him out. So it's basically the exact same plot that we have in Mary Poppins Return so it seems like they shelved that idea and pulled it right back but they did need Tavers approval for the treatment of this which is like I said something they had a very difficult time getting. But then again, why specifically couldn't we have a ride created? Even though there was all of this drama going on with the film, in the contract that Tavers signed, she agreed to give her stories on over to the Walt Disney Company, but she said with any stage show or anything external that was going to be created with her stories, they were going to have to follow the books to a T and they couldn't really take creative liberty on that. So that was kind of the reason why they couldn't kind of jump off the page and make this into a whole attraction because it wasn't going to be the way that Disney wanted it done. But after Tavers passed away, Disney's legal team really went at it and they referred to a clause that was based in the first contract that she signed that basically said that any production that was going to be put on in the West End after 21 days of it being open, it was going to be copyrighted and linked to the Disney film, which meant that it was going to be coinciding with it, which kind of 
X'd out the next clause that Taver said that anything that was going to be created in the future with Mary Poppins had to stick to the books, considering that any production in the West End would have to be linked to the film. So they kind of X'd each other out, and in the end, Disney settled and was able to kind of have all the rights to themselves. And all of this settling didn't happen till quite recently. It wasn't until 2004 that Disney had the solidified full rights to Mary Poppins, which is crazy considering how long ago Walt Disney wanted to get this story and make his mark on it. And then of course, now that Disney owns everything, they were able to make their sequel. And now that it is coming to Epcot, they're totally able to make a ride that's gonna be true to the films opposed to true to the book. So we're gonna have all of that dancing and singing and all of the colorful things that we know and love about Mary Poppins in this attraction. So that's all the information we have about this abandoned idea of a Mary Poppins attraction in Disney. We know that it's something that has definite blueprints on. We have two kind of different distinct attractions that it could be. Something that's basically going to be another dark ride or something that could be a whole lot more depending on what Imagineers can do with it. Of course, we don't know if either of these is what we're going to see in Epcot once it's all created. But I know that I would personally love it if they could get different ride tracks going on one attraction. I think it would be amazing and I think that if you're gonna do something that's gonna be going from something steady to something that's hopping all over the place and then flying there is literally no better IP to do it with than Mary Poppins. So now I want to hear from you. Is there something that I'm missing on this because there's not too much information that's been leaked out about these abandoned ideas and I would love to get more on it. So if you know more, definitely comment below. And then you can also comment below on your thoughts about these attractions. Is this something that you would like to see? What are your ideas for what's coming to Epcot in the future? And then if you enjoyed this video, you need to make sure that you give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you love talking about any Diz nerdy things all the time. And now that we've discussed this, I think I'm gonna go uh, fly a kite, maybe have a spoonful of sugar because it's super califragilistic expialidocious, and then I'm gonna clean my chimney just because it's fun. <laughs> okay, bye everyone. <laughs>